Continuing with our inspired lessons in the style of the great Stevie Ray Vaughan. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a big batch of licks um, in the style that you can kind of twist and make your own. And uh, they're great blues licks that Stevie was inspired by or that Stevie used in, in his style. And you could easily make these fit into yours. A lot of these licks are kind of like the bread and butter of blues rock guitar. We're gonna do this lesson in the key of A minor. First, a little bit about the gear and the sound I have set up. Uh, I'm using this Fender Stratocaster guitar, uh, three single coils. I'm gonna be mainly on the neck pickup, so switch all the way up. And I'm playing out of a Fender Hot Rod DeVille. That's a tube amp, two, it's a combo, two 12 inch speakers, six L6 tubes. I have that mic'd off camera with a Shure SM57 microphone. And in front of the um, amp, I have a, a little overdrive pedal. This is the Friedman BEOD pedal. I'm on the clean channel of the amp. I'm running the guitar into the pedal and then from the pedal into the front of the amp. It's very important. Try this because this is going to kind of push that amp and kind of kick it to drive it harder. Um, and it uh, works really well. So try it with your overdrive or tube screamers. And that's kind of uh, what Stevie did. And also I have this uh, a pedal set up kind of the way he had it too where the gain is, is, is just cracked a little bit and the level is up okay so again we're just smacking that amp so just to give you an example right here's the amp clean now when I kick on the pedal is I'm in E flat tuning so all the strings are tuned half step down remember this is a real aggressive style that we're doing here so you really got to kind of go for it and all that the way he attacked those strings right and really dug in I mean that a lot of that goes into the to the sound right the more you can work those notes right the more tone you're gonna have so we're in the key of A minor for these licks and we're going to pull these from one of Stevie's favorite scales, that A minor pentatonic and blues scale. Now, for all the licks, we're going to use this shape. So here's our first lick. All right, you probably heard very similar licks in his playing, especially in a slow blues where we're just kind of, and again, a lot of heavy vibrato and we're working this mini box. Um, okay, that's a very important one too. And then he would follow up with uh, maybe something like this. I went up to that high E string and I bent it, but then what I do is, uh, this is kind of a cool thing Stevie did too, is catch the B string also by getting it under the finger and then you could bend both of them. So you get those really nice overtones when you bend that. So it's like I'm bending up and now I'm catching the B string under the third finger and now I'm hitting them both. Right, so you get that. And then you can always go back to that flat third to major third bend and give it a little, like a, just a little like a quarter step. Then you have your root note right here. And you can go back to that. Again, heavy vibrato. Heavy vibrato, string ranking, all the things we're doing with this technique, right? Here's some more cool string bending in this position in the style of Stevie Ray, something like this. So what we're doing here is really bending this 10th fret D note to the E. Right, and then you can catch that B string underneath it if you want. What makes that look cool is you're going on the 10th fret of the B string 
right to the tenth fret of the high E string. And then you do a double bend. Bend up, release, bend up again. Right, there's that little hook again, that flat third bend. It's a real classic kind of bluesy lick. And then you kind of slide back into the scale. There's that flat third bend again on that C note. To our roots, same thing we were doing here. Right? Another common blues device that Stevie and many blues players use are things like this. Where we're bending to our blue note. And then I'm grabbing on the fifth fret that E note. You want to get fast at it and notice I'm bending with two fingers for more strength and and I'm not pulling my hand out after the bend. Keep it in nice and tight against the fretboard, close as you can. All right, and then when you get that, the next step would be add the high E string at the fifth fret. So I'm barring with my first finger. Again, both my fingers are kind of acting as one together. The next step, if we build some licks in this style, is just go bend, and then you're gonna go, you're gonna go to that from the fifth to the eighth fret, and then pull off, right? When you build up the speed. Then go down to the high E, like you did before, then do the pull off. Another leg. And you could finish it off, bending to the blue note, then release, pull off. Another very common device that Stevie would do is he would descend down the blues scale like this. Right? If I speed that lick up, end it with a trill. So all I'm doing is a straight descending right down the blues scale. Then when you get down to that D note, fifth fret, on that A string, you do that hammer and pull, much like we did it here. And then low E string, eighth fret, fifth fret, A string. And then eight, five on the low E string. And then we jump over, skip over the A string, and do that trill from five to seven on the D. Keep going with it. That's a really good tag for a lot of licks. Tag are kind of like an ending that you can kind of change up, vary your lick. And speaking of double stops, here's another double stop that uh, he would use this device a lot. Now this one's a little harder. You're gonna bar, like we did before, fifth fret G and B strings, but this time you're gonna hammer from the five to the seven fret on the G but you want the B string to ring out. So you're gonna bar G and B, but you gotta really curl your fingers. Cause when you hit that double stop, see the reason why it sounds so cool is because I'm getting the hammer, but I'm also getting the note underneath it because I'm letting that B string ring. See my finger is cupped here. I'm not flattening it because if you, the more it's flat, you're gonna hit the B string and kill it. You want that B string to ring out for that E note. Okay, another tag is when you go from that, from that, you could slide. Before we were bending, bending to that blue note, you can also slide. And then pull off, so it's um, uh, picking the uh, seventh fret, sliding eight, slide seventh, pull off five, bend it. That's how I went back 
to it. Right time double stop. See, that's the whole trick. You kind of vary your licks, change them up every time. This is kind of like the bunches of bass licks. Take them, vary, and put your own spin on them. Here's a fun little lick that incorporates a device. Okay, that's called going from the one to the one. And uh, you'll hear that in his playing, and that's where we end the last two notes of the lick. Is an A note, and then I slide up to an A note. It's the same note, but because I'm playing it first on the high E, and then I slide up to, on the B string to the 10th fret A note, 5th fret on the high E string A note. Same note, but you hear a little difference in timbre because the different thicknesses of the strings. Kind of an old kind of 50s lick that you might hear guys do. So there's a whole bunch of blues licks in this style. A lot of common heard blues licks but when you add this Stevie Ray aggressiveness to it and the string rakes and the heavy vibrato right then you're really getting into the wheelhouse of his sound and uh, have fun with those. Try them in different keys. Vary your licks right? I showed you lots of different variations. You could play the same lick in a repeated kind of melodic motif, but vary the ending. Use a different tag ending, right? Rock on.